Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. And in today's video, we are going to be flying a fully reusable N1 to the Mun and back. So let's get let's get straight into it. Uh, if you don't know what the N1 is, it is uh, the Soviet Union's failed attempt to get to the moon and back. That was a rocket they were going to use. Uh, it failed um, in many explosions, so uh, let's hope let's hope mine doesn't um, explode many times. But uh, right now, yeah, we've just launched and now we are firing uh, our bottom stage, which is known as Block A. And, um, you know, normally you'd expect a rocket to kind of do like a bit of a pitch over maneuver, or like a gravity turn, you know, kind of get some horizontal speed and get into orbit. But uh, uh, not today, not, to, not, not on this bottom stage. We are going to be going straight up. Gravity turns are American propaganda. No, just kidding. We actually have a, uh, we actually have a reason for doing this. So... Um, because we have to stage away that bottom stage early, because like I said, we're, re we're literally reusing all the stages. There are, I believe, six pieces that come back in total. I don't say, I say pieces, not stages, because we kind of combine, we do weird stuff, so I guess stay tuned. Um, so yeah, the reason we did such a steep ascent profile uh, off the pad uh, is because we had to save some fuel in our in our bottom stage to actually land with it. So we weren't able to get the, the second stage as far as you normally would be able to get it, uh, which means the second stage has to do a lot more work, which means, uh, and it has a really low TWR or thrust to weight ratio. So uh, yeah, that's why, because if we pitched over it, the second stage would have just fallen out of the sky. So that's why we're doing that. But uh, right now, and another advantage is we don't have to do any sort of correction slash boost back burn with this uh, bottom stage. We can just come straight back down. And now we are coming down. We are firing our seven inner, or six inner engines, or rather, um, of the 30 engines, only firing six just uh, to do our landing burn, because that's really all we need. So here we are coming down right back over the KSC, right oh, right next to the launch pad, 300 meters, 200 meters, 100 meters, and now we are, we're just about down with a little bit of, a little bit of fuel to spare, which is uh, not going to be the case for all of our, all of our stages. And... Touchdown! Touch to touch to touch to touch touchdown. Welcome, welcome back, Block A. Now we can crossfade back to uh, crossfade back to Block B uh, as it fires its uh, six skiff engines. Oh yeah, six of them, or eight. Yeah, eight engines. I can count, right? <laughs> I know how many engines are on the end. Totally. Um, I didn't. Yeah. So yeah, we're just firing our skiff engines, which are going to be our stand-in for the. Uh, for the uh, the real engine, because obviously real engine is in in KSP. So now we can actually start to do a pitch over maneuver, and it's you kind of kind of kind of have to kind of crazy to realize that we've been flying for like many minutes now, and we are still going like 120 meters a second. This thing is really, 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 really slow. Uh, yeah. So I'm trying to pitch to maintain around 12 to 10 seconds to apwap or time to apwap. If you look in the bottom left hand corner, as we cross around 20 kilometers now, we are really not going very fast. We're just about to hit 20 kilometers uh, right now. So yeah, uh, what we're going to be doing with this uh, Block B is uh, we're going to be doing a kind of weird um, way to recover it. Because if you, as you can see right now, we're kind of flying over the ocean. I mean, we could land in the ocean, but that, that's kind of lame. I kind of want to, I want to bring them all back to land, right? I know that's kind of arbitrary, but hey, uh, why, why not? So there we go. We have now staged away that um, that uh, second stage now, and the third stage is going to get uh, firing now. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip over the Block B, start uh, spinning it, and then we're going to do a boost back burn. Um, because it is so flat on the front, as you can see, it's not very aerodynamic, which makes it want to be extremely unstable. So we have to kind of spin stabilize it. Um, and the skiffs don't have a lot of uh, gimbals. So yeah, we're basically just spinning it in a circle to try and uh, to try and to try and keep it sort of stable. It doesn't really do a good job. I mean, in theory, I could have probably brought it back to the KSC, but it was it was so unstable. Um, we're gonna just kind of land in the in the general area. So. Yeah, so <laughs> it's gonna be crazy when we when we get this thing down. We're gonna have more rocket um, on the ground than you will uh, on on the on the uh, in uh, in in the air by the time uh, by the time these land. And there's gonna be more rocket um, before the KSC than after, which is kind of, that doesn't even make sense. But uh, yeah, it's like you know two minutes into flight and most of the rocket is still <laughs> still at the KSC, <laughs> which is kind of we're three four minutes into flight and most of the rocket is still at the KSC. Eh, that's kind of ironic if I'm even making any sense. But here we are now coming back in for a landing. I have I kind of have my my uh, control thing flipped over, so we're, you know we have to kind of look a bit weird. But uh, yeah, so here we're coming down now because the skiffs do not have a lot of gimbal. Uh, like I said earlier, the this landing is a kind of awkward. Um, we kind of just have to flop it onto the ground here, or else you know if we try and do some sort of intricate perfect landing, uh, it's just gonna flip over and not work and just die. But uh, we just cut the engines. Hey, we made it. So now we can crossfade over to Block V. 
uh, or third stage, which is f powered by four Poodle engines. And this thing is also not having a great time getting into orbit. But this thing uh, will, will, this stage will get us into orbit. This stage is a beast. It has so much delta V. Like those other two stages got us up to like 600 meters a second of delta V. And this one is going to get us all the way up to orbital velocity. And it's going to land. Uh, and a spoiler alert, uh, this stage, Block V, was by far the hardest stage to recover. You wouldn't really assume it um, by looking at it. But hey, you know, looks can be deceiving. Um, but right now what we're doing is we are still <laughs> accelerating very slowly. But we are, we are, we are speeding up. We are eventually uh, going to be getting there as we cross across just about 29 kilometers now. Um, yeah, I'm trying to keep the uh, the nose a little high uh, also to uh, make sure we don't fall back down to curb and because I want to get a slightly steep um, vertical speed as you know, we want a, a slightly higher vertical speed or else we're just going to have a bunch of gravity losses um, or we're going to have a lot of aerodynamic losses um, as you drift on up to app waps and we'll, we'll lose efficiency. So here we are. We have, we have made it. Now we're crossing 70 kilometers. Now we can deploy the fairing now. We can reveal uh, the Soyuz and the lander and stuff and then we can get rid of the... Um, launch escape system but wait a minute there there's a probe core on this launch escape system that that's kind of weird what 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 could be the purpose what could be the purpose of that i guess i guess you'll have to wait because we have to get into orbit first or else um if we worried about that for first we would have we would have just uh, fallen back down so let's get let's deal with one thing at a time so yeah um about the launch escape system there we go just revealing the lander there and deploying our solar panel on the lander um uh, when I when I when I did my Saturn V fully reusable Saturn V video a while ago, it's been it's been a few months now actually. Um, I got a, quite a few comments, like literally probably a third to a half of the comments were literally uh, the launch escape system didn't get recovered or the fairings. I mean, granted the fairings aren't going to get recovered this time, but the launch escape system is. See, we are technically fully reusable still. See, you guys, I well, I guess technically not because the fairings, but hey, fair, yeah, we'll just pretend like they had like a thing that catched them, you know, like SpaceX does or caught them yeah so those haters will now be a completely completely destroyed omg banger lit content guys right <laughs> we, we 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 shut down those haters yeah so we are we're literally going to recover the launch escape system and if you if you think this is the litest content subscribe right join the discord oh my gosh plug city like comment subscribe notification squad guys oh my gosh fidget skinner uh, skinner i can't even say it right it's so cringy fidget spinner there we go uh yeah so yeah literally i'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of those comments um by the way in that other video were kind of sarcastic and they, they were kind of funny but it's, it's still crazy every few days or probably every day probably one comment a day that i get is from a video from months ago saying oh, you didn't reuse the launch escape but hey those we we have proved them wrong we have reused the launch escape system and probably saved the kerbals like three dollars <laughs> It probably cost them money because they have to make the parachute and stuff. Probably wasn't even worth it. But uh, hey, we did it. And now it is time to recover another stage. Look at all the stage recover re recovery. Oh, did I mention joining the Discord? Just kidding. I don't know why. I said this last video. Why I'm why I'm, I'm pushed to Discord so much. I don't know. Arbitrary number. I want to get into. I want to get a Discord partner. And I figured the more people, the better. And yeah, more people, the better. I guess. So uh, yeah. Um, now we are coming down to. Um, Coming down, coming down to Kerbin with this uh, Block V, which is by far, uh, like I said, the hardest to uh, to to land. Uh, this took many, many, many attempt, attempt, attempts rather. That's how you. That's how we speak. Um, because the poodle, the poodle engine, um, it loses an insane amount of fish, of efficiency. I'm gonna make a quick save. We're definitely gonna need that quick save uh, as we get lower to the ground. Like it basically loses all of its thrust and all of its specific impulse as you get low. So you have to bring a deceivingly large amount of delta v because you it basically all disappears as you get low and see look at that it lost all its stress and we have to reload the quick save so here we are reloading the quick save i could have a parachute on that but hey parachutes are cheating even though we're gonna use parachutes later but hey i tried to use as little parachutes as possible so yeah this thing was really tricky you, ha you can't even land at sea level like i have to land kind of on the mountain like we're landing like two thousand two kilometers about above sea level um yeah <laughs> and otherwise the engines would literally run out of thrust like you literally couldn't land it on the water it would not the thing would have a the thing wouldn't even be able to maintain its speed it would just it would just crash down but uh, hey we did it and we tipped over that looked like a big explosion but that really was minimal damages like that still we really only lost um the modular girders um that uh, connected the reaction wheels so i i call that fine we got clickbait confirmed only 99.9% .9 reusable and I guess the fairing so maybe 99 point maybe just 99% reusable 
No, you, you've been clickbaited. All right. Now, as we get into the later part of the video, we can uh, we can get to the fun and back. We are doing my mission quite quickly because you guys are here for the for the cool stages landing. So who cares about the mun? We'll try and, we'll try and get through this a little bit very, very quickly. But we have recovered now um, four of the six pieces of the rocket that we are that we are going to be recovering. So there are two more recoveries still. Oh my gosh, guys, two more. I wonder what two they could be. Oh my gosh. So we have a uh, block G now, which is what this is called. Um, this one's called here, uh, that we just staged away. So that one did our translunar injection burn and our circularization around the month. And now what is going to be with this remaining Delta V is going to be to return itself back to Kerbin. So yeah, this is going to be uh, thingy number five that we're going to be recovering. And here we are. We're going to be doing kind of like a, a very aer not aerodynamic <laughs> re-entry, right? We're going to be pointing radial out and just trying to slow down as quickly as possible because, hey, slowing down is fun. Um, almost exploding the uh, exploding the stage as we do that, but hey, uh, that's not important. This one, because it is powered by the cheetah, cheetah engine, it really wouldn't have enough thrust or delta V really to do any sort of a landing. So this thing is going to have to be a, a parachute assisted. I know, I didn't like it. Um, I didn't like doing it, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. And I, I, think, I think realistically the stage is light enough that you could conceivably use a parachute with it. So I think, because those bigger stages, I mean, you could like throw 1,500 parachutes on them in KSP and it'll work perfectly. But hey, that's not really how real life works. So we're trying to keep this semi-realistic. But hey, we have deployed our four parachutes now. And uh, we are, we made it. We made it back, basically. So here we go. Now we're going to deploy the landing legs like so. And we can come down the last few meters and touchdown. All right. That is five out of the six pieces of the rocket recovered. And here is the final piece. You might be wondering, there was a lander and an entire Soyuz here. How are we going to recover this all in one thing? Because, you know, we just decoupled the lander. Well, you know, I'm well, glad you asked. Um... Um, uh, parachutes. <laughs> well, you'll see. So, um, one thing I noticed here right now with my uh, uh, lander is I forgot any sort of reaction control system. So there's there's no way to control it without firing the engine. Like there's no reaction wheels and no monoprop. I probably should have thought about when I'm building it. So basically, yeah. So if I want to control which direction this rocket with the this lander is pointing, um, I have to uh, I have to fire the engine. Um, hey. You know what? That that's how the Soviets. They, who who wastes time on inferior reaction wheels and monoprop thrusters? Here in Soviet Russia, we use superior, superior Soviet Russia. We use engines for everything. <laughs> uh, anyway, after terrible accents aside, um, we are now coming in for for a bit of a landing, bit of a landing on the moon. Coming into a crater. Uh, craters are cool. Um, craters with big shadows aren't as cool, but hey, they're still good enough as we come down. Now we can deploy the landing legs and coming on down. And... Oh, 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 oh. We're actually kind of still a little bit way up. It looks like we're landed because of the way, you know, shadows and stuff. Um, optical illusion! Hey, now we made it. Alright, now we can go ahead and uh, EVA our Kerbal and all hatches are obstructed. I guess we're not going to EVA our Kerbal and we can just uh, go <laughs> wait one orbit and then we can we can go ahead and do our rendezvous and head back. And, and set target and, and, <gasps> let's go! Yay, heading back to Kerbin now. Normally the uh, LK, which is the, the lander, I, I'm pretty sure that stands for a lunar craft, but that's like a complete guess. Um, or lander craft, I don't know, either way. Um, so yeah, this thing, normally you would stage away those bottom fuel tanks. You, you keep the, the engine, which is a mistake that I made um, uh, on the last time I made an N1. I also made the N1 way too fat last time, that's why I made a new N1 for this video, because my old N1 was a bit of a piece of trash. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, so normally I, I made the mistake last time of, uh, of making it a separate stage, cause, but no, there was actually only one stage, which I think is a better way of doing things, um, but, than the way NASA did it, um, but, uh, hey, you know what, I mean, NASA made it to the moon and, uh, Sophia Sin, right? <laughs> um, that's because they had a ridiculous rocket with 30 engines in their bottom stage, but, that's uh, beside the point. So now we're, we're gonna mainly be using the Soyuz to do our docking, um, because the LK, um, really can't control itself, so yeah. Normally, you would detach those bottom things, but since we're, we are reusing everything, we are not going to detach them, right? And normally, the Soyuz also splits up. It has a descent module, an orbit module, and a service module. That so that's all going to stay attached. Normally, you obviously ditch this lander once you get the crew transferred over. 
But you know, reusable can't can't can be doing that, can we? And I have all the all the um command pods are completely full, so even if we ditch the lander, we'd just be killing Kerbal. So yeah, so hey, fun fun stuff. And uh, now that kind of us our little docking thing kind of put us on a suborbital trajectory, but hey, we can fix that. And now we can do our final big burn. Yeah, our final burn. Um, to um to get ourselves um to get ourselves landed on Kerbin. And this this entire thing is gonna come down as one monolithic structure, I guess. Um, one, one big, one big old guy um, is gonna come, come back down to Kerbin. We're not gonna split it up. We're not gonna sage. We are gonna, we're gonna bring the sixth and final piece back in, in, in one piece. Hopefully, yeah. Um, so initially, I tried this for a while, and there were big heating problems, um, you know, especially with the landing legs um, being removed. But then I realized, hey. Um, I could first of all do spinny stuff, that tends to work, and um, my Soyuz, um, I have radiators on that. I kind of did that to just to help with the look, and hey, I could use the radiators, and uh, yeah, so now we have no heating problems, um, and also no electric charge at the moment, so this thing's kind of spinning out of control. Well, not really um, quite yet. I don't remember when you run out of electric charge, but it's pretty soon, yeah. I think, right, yeah, right here is when I run out of electric charge. So yeah, now it's kind of just aimlessly floating around, but we have Kerbals in our command pod, so we can actually, you know, still deploy the parachutes and stuff. So here we go. Now we are now uh, coming in for the last last time to Kerbin. As we, <laughs> this, thing, this seems like a very comfortable ride for the Kerbinats, just spinning and stuff and pulling all sorts of G's. But hey, well, yeah, it's fun. They love they love space. So here we go. Coming down through seven kilometers, six kilometers, five, four, three, two. Vaughn parachutes deployed and there we go we we've done did it we done did it it's like a nice sunset landing and stuff ish the mountains are kind of blocking the sun but hey it's it's still pretty cool and here we go deploying the landing legs for the final time and now we're coming down uh, i mean pretty quickly five meters a second isn't slow but eight landing legs are pretty beefy you go 30 meters 20 meters 10 meters Touchdown! Yay, we did it. We're back. Everything, everything except for the fairings is back. Um, so yeah, that uh, that's gonna be the video. So I hope hope you enjoyed. Um, it's gonna be it for me. So I'd like to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please rate or comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.